welcome to Basel slash Switzerland, France. Uh, had a good flight, just waiting for my luggage now. Paul Malin's gone to sort out the hire car. So I'm going to pick up my luggage and meet my chauffeur soon. <laughs> I'm going to go and find Paul. Ooh, hello. All right. Yeah, you got the car sorted? You've got to go to the new circuit. Right. Suze Lacoot, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's get this show on the road. There's only been three GPs here. The last one was won by Stefan Evitz in 1998, and there's been a motocross of nations here way back in 1988, won by Team USA. And we'll have our first tidbit of motocross of nations news this weekend. I've not been here before, but I'm excited to see what's in store for us at the MXGP of France. You excited, Paul? Always. Good. <laughs> got us lost. Um, we're following the sat-nav, but we are quite literally in the middle of nowhere. I'd so, say uh, the middle of the forest. We're in the middle of the forest. Uh, not sure where we're going, but uh, we'll keep you posted. Let's put it this way. <laughs> the, the, the team trips haven't come this way. I know that. <laughs> I have no idea where I am. There's a road. D123, left! The track's got to be over there. We're going left. Yeah. It's left, left. <laughs> Finally, we've made it. We're in the paddock. Welcome to the French GP of Villa Sousa Cox. Benoît Paturel, number 6, Kemea, Yama, Yama, Luc, Racing Team. Mathieu Paulin, number 21, riding for High Chelsea Honda. It's just over 90 metres long down into turn one, and it is downhill as well. 180 degrees, a right hand turn. Exit onto the first plateau, past pit lane, and turn two is 180 left, dropping downhill again. Immediately out of the exit, there is a, a series of waves, the last one being slightly bigger and more rounded before dropping down through the left, just to the edge of the track there, a slight knuckle, but then we have the first uphill, a big double jump, five waves at the top of the hill, going right the way through the corner, then dropping down, stepping up, and then stepping down again before turning right at the end of the straight below the first Monster Energy banner and down the first of the steep descents. Hard on the brakes at the bottom through the 180 right. Third gear as they head back uphill, jumping through the turn onto a plateau. And then over a series of jumps again, stepping down a tabletop at the end, 
and then uphill into the next left-hander. Two options here as they head under the monster bridge, jump short or long, as both riders chose just there. Hard on the brakes at the bottom of the hill, through the 180 left. Head back uphill over a slight crest. A right-hand turn, the other side of there, 180, dropping downhill, off a single. And then a series of rollers through here before arriving at a, a tabletop jump into the final corner, just here. And then we head through the right-hander, up the final hill, over the huge Monster Energy finish line jump. The riders landing on the start straight to turn right, back down to turn one. We promised you a bit of Motocross of Nations news this week, and that comes in the form of Team France launching their colours for the most important race of the year. The Nations this year will be in Ernie on the 27th of September, and Team France will be defending their crown that they won in Latvia in front of their home crown. But who will be on that, and who will be on the other teams? No one knows at this stage, and there's still so much more racing still to come between now and then. One team everyone looks out for is Team USA, and we have an American here with us this weekend, Mike Alessi, and I caught up with him as he got his first taster of the track here in France. There's an old saying that I've heard a long time ago. A body in motion tends to stay in motion. A body at rest tends to stay at rest. Really? So if you're like on the bed sleeping, you're always going to be tired. Hey Mike. How you doing, Lisa? Good, good. What are your first impressions of this track here in France? Well, we're here at France and uh, it's a great track. Looks like a little bit of a little bit of a mini uh, Glen Helen with the downhills, the uphills. Um, it's got a lot of stones, which is to be expected, and uh, the track's going to shape up really well. Now let's talk about Matali. It was your first round over here in Europe. Didn't quite go to plan, did it? It didn't go to plan, but that's okay. You know, we take the learning experience and we get the bike set up and figure out what we need to do and be ready for this weekend here in France. In the GPs, we've got a really tight schedule. You've got all the support classes, a lot of rules and regulations. Do you feel like you've got your head around the rules, regulations, the timings? Have you done your homework with all I have done my homework and I have to say I really like it. It's professional, the timetable's awesome. They really stick to the time and uh, they're really good about that part. And the tracks are awesome, the fans are great and it's just great to be in Europe. I'm up to the challenge and I look forward to it. dipping in and out of the championship you're here for two rounds what's it like for a rider is that tough because I guess you just want to race you want to compete but at the same time you can't fully commit to to the GPs over here it is tough in a sense that I have not been racing with the GP guys and they are six rounds in um, but no excuses these guys are fast the tracks are tough and you have to be able to step up and be able to figure it out quickly and that's the difference between the top riders and the guys who are not being able to get there and that's what I'm trying to figure out right now so I'm a racer and I love to race whether it's in America Canada in Europe here in France uh, looking forward to this weekend and uh, you never know with next year with the GPs we possibly could be racing the smart top moto concepts team might be here so maybe look for us in the 2016 season you're a bit of a whole shot king over in the states are we going to see those starts this weekend that is the plan i don't know what happened last weekend it was definitely not the michael lessie that everybody's used to on the start so this weekend i need to be up there getting whole shots and uh, competing with the front guys well good luck mike for this weekend and it's great to have you over here at the gp <laughs> uh, let's see how mike gets on in mxgp race one Well, Mike Alessi didn't make the best of starts. In fact, coming home 18th in the qualifying race. Instead, it was Roman Fevre, that guy there, who qualified on pole after winning the qualifying race on Saturday. Gauthier Paulin was second, Evgeny Bobashev third, Van Horbeek was fourth, and Kenda Dijker was fifth. The two Belgians taking their best qualifying race finishes of the year. There were doubts over Clement de Salle's fitness after he dislocated his shoulder in the qualifying race. 
But as the gate dropped, Gauthier Paulin charged down into turn one, but it was Antonio Cairoli on the Red Bull KTM who pulled the foxhole shot. Tyler Etre and Jose Boutron fell at the first turn. Bobrachev ran wide, allowing his teammate through into second behind Tony Cairoli. And the French fans loved every minute of it. The HRC rider always had Cairoli in his sights. Whilst behind them in third, Dean Ferris and Roman Fevre gave chase. Clamada Sal realized the shoulder injury was just too much and would withdraw from the race as Fevre started to make his move. He passed the Australian Ferris to get himself into third. The Australian then came under attack from Evgeny Bobrashev. The big Russian made his move at the bottom of the hill as Gauthier Paulin was out of second position and out of the race. His HRC pulling to a halt at the bottom of the hill. Roman Fevre though, the next best French rider found himself in second as championship leader Max Nagel was fighting through from in 11th. Eventually got himself up onto the rear wheel of Jeremy Van Horbeek. He would come home in sixth in race one. Tony Cairoli though, he continued to push on and he was being hounded all the way by the Yamaha of Roman Fevre. The French fans sensing an upset here in the first race as he got closer and closer to the rear wheel of the 2-2-2. Carving his way through the deep ruts, he tried, but he was not able to find a way through. And in the end, it was Cairoli who hung on. Fair for second, Bobrachev was third. Monster Energy Kawasaki have had their first share of bad luck this past few seasons, but through all of it, they've managed to keep smiling. Uh, I have to say, uh... We are French, but we also speak uh, a little bit English, so we can also joke in English, and that's that's no problem. Uh, especially with Tyler, who give uh, a very good atmosphere in, in the team. So the last few GPs was good for him. Um, it's it's the places we were expecting him to be. Well, Rattray is number one right now, but the name on everyone's lips is Ryan Villapoto. How did his move to the team come about? We heard some rumors that, that uh, Ryan was interested to, to come in, uh, in Europe for, for uh, this season, uh, but the confirmation was very, very late. We did it in the month of September. We put in place a program and a level of the team to permit Ryan Villapoto to train in the United States with Tyler Rattray. It's not that we, we have pressure from, from outside, but we want to always to do good. Ryan uh, is, a, is a legend, you know, in the sport, so uh, we want to uh, give 200% uh, 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 for, for this. It was a good opportunity for the team to discover the United States with different terrains with a different culture, but we put in place a specific program for Grand Prix in the United States. Just before Arco, we had some, some updates on, on engine and electronic side uh, for him. Uh, he was happy with, him, with it, and uh, yeah, it, it just came at the wrong moment because he had, a, I would say, a, a good uh, improvement curve. Well, that crash in Trentino somehow mirrored the 2014 crash that ruined Gauthier Paulin's title hopes with the team. I would say that the injury to Gauthier in Valkenswaard and the injury to Ryan, we can understand because motocross is still a dangerous sport and the riders are very, very close to the limit because if you want to win, you have to push the limit. With Ryan, we goes for, for, for GP wins, uh, was also for, for championship, but that's gone. What are their riders' recovery? Well, sometimes a timetable is just impossible to put in place. 
Être en forme pour rouler sur une moto, c'est... To be fit enough to ride a moto is one thing, but to be ready for a GP, and it takes some time to be ready for a Grand Prix. It could be two weeks, three weeks, could be a month. Right now, we don't know. Voilà. GP race two, and on board with Gauthier Paul, and as he got squeezed to the inside, it was Max Nagel who grabbed the Fox hole shot, but Paul and Ferris banged bars as David Philippots and Sean Simpson both crashed at turn one. Kai Rowley and Paul and not best placed this time around, as Max Nagel, Todd Waters, Roman Fevre, and Evgeny Boroshev were the lead riders at the start of the race. Fevre going through on Waters to get himself into second and then went after the championship leader as Paul Ant started to carve his way through the field. Found his way past Kenda Dijka, but then it started to go wrong. He started to make a few mistakes, started to drop backwards. Kai Rowley was through on the HRC rider. Suddenly, the Frenchman was all lost at sea, but he started to respond. Found his way back past the eight-time world champion and got himself back into sixth position. Genny Bobashev was having a solid day here in France. Got himself into third as Waters then came under attack from Glenn Koldanov, who was having a great second race as well. In fourth, eventually faded back to fifth. But all eyes on the battle at the front. Max Nagel being passed there for the lead by Roman Fevre, who was in a class of his own barely putting a wheel wrong. And even though the team told him to concentrate, they needn't worry as he crossed the line to take his second race win in two weeks, but this time with it, his home Grand Prix victory as well. Febre wins here in France then. Bobrashev second, Cairoli third. Nagel extends his lead at the top of the championship table. Cairoli second, Dassault is now third. Welcome back to France, a Grand Prix that is as close as it gets to home for new MX2 sensation Valentin Guillaume. Uh, you know, four years ago, uh, I saw a young kid with number 173 on the KTM and he was riding so wild and he started top five and then he rode 10 minutes top five. And then uh, from the 10th minute till the 15th minute, he, he booked past every guy who came next to him. And the last 15 minutes, he, 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 he arrived, let's say, 30th. So uh, it wasn't working, it was all, always partying and, and not, not being serious as a racer, let's say. If you don't have one uh, line direction, you know, you just go where you, the wind sends you, you know, it's not good because you lose 5% of energy here, 5 here, and at the end of the day, it's, it's mean a lot. So. Sometimes people ask me, hey, we can still uh, uh, call you Valentin. I say, you know, I'm still the same. I just want two GP, but I'm still the same guys. And uh, I just have a bit more respect from people uh, who before didn't say hello, but now they were thinking I was a funny guy, you know, just laughing all the time. But now they can see that I work out. You have um, one sport life. Uh, where you have to be nice and, uh, and good, see a good um, image of you. But then you have a family life, a private life, and sometimes you have some problem here. And uh, for sure, you know, when you are on the bike, and uh, actually it's the more easy thing to do, because it's the thing I, have, I can do the best. Since this morning, I see people going to him and hey, and this weekend you have to do the same and this and that. So we try to keep him calm. Uh, of course, we expect him doing good, but we don't expect him to win the GP. 
just want to, to enjoy the, the weekend and it will be nice because I, I'm 80 kilometers from my hometown and uh, hometown and a lot of people will, will come and uh, I hope they, they bring a Swiss flag and and I will see next to the to the track and hear him uh, hear them uh, screaming. For the second weekend in a row, Valentin Gio will start from pole after taking his standing construct Yamaha Yamaloop machine to the qualifying race victory ahead of Tixie and Geiser. Jeffrey Hurlings crashed out and would have a poor gate pick, but it didn't stop the Dutchman from sweeping down into turn one, just behind the 338 of David Herbertot, who ran wide though, handing the Fox hole shot to Hurlings. Two French riders fell at the back, Robin Capel and Alexi Verheg, but up front, Hurlings was in charge as the two Kimia Yamahas of Benoit Pacherel and Damon Graulis battled in the early stages of the race, just outside the top 10. Tixier found his way past the fast starting Herbertro. Jonas fell at the bottom of the hill, out of 7th and back down to 12th. Eventually he would get back to 7th, but Valentin Guillo, after making a poor start, was on the charge as well and soon carving his way through the field, passing the lights of Tonkov and Petrov. Jeremy Sewer was also battling in there as well just outside the top 10, but then he made this move on Petrov at the bottom of the hill. It all went wrong, and he collected Benoit Pacherel as well. See what would eventually finish in 10th. Pacherel down in 20th as Hurlings crashed out of the lead. A loss in concentration left the KTM rider on the floor, and it wasn't just Gio that went through. It was Tixier as well, who was the new leader. Gio sensed his opportunity and hard charge his way down the inside of the Frenchman to take the lead. And a couple of laps later, it was hurling through into second. And he went then after Valentin Guillot on the Yamaha. Four laps from home. And Hurlings made this pass, but it didn't quite stick. He would have to wait another few corners to make it happen. And eventually the pass came just into the final corner at the end of lap 17. And Hurlings went on to win ahead of Guillot and Tixia. Start of NX2, race two, all eyes on Valentin Guillo, Jordi Tixier, and Jeffrey Hurlings. Benoit Patrol in the thick of it again as he headed down the start straight. Once again, it was Jeffrey Hurlings who grabbed the Fox hole shot. Geiser and Tonkov were well placed. Max Anstey, who were on board with here, didn't make a great start, but he held a nice tight line through the first few corners. But up the hill, Valentin Guillo and Damon Graulis crashed out spectacularly. Gio eventually picked himself up from the crash, rejoined the race and set about carving through the field. He was lucky to get up. Both riders were. But it was a frantic start to the race for Gio. Tim Geiser found himself in second on the Garibaldi Honda, chasing down Jeffrey Hurlings. As the number one, Geordie Tixier, made his move into third with that pass on Paul's Jonas. 91 of Jeremy Sewer. Couldn't find a way past the 59 of Alex Tonkov, but Max Anstey on the 99 Kawasaki could, and he eventually came home in fifth. Tonkov went out, and that helped the Brit into that fifth place. Tonkov would eventually come home in seventh place. But it was frantic at the front for Jeffrey Hurlings once more, this time being chased all the way by the Slovenian Tim Geiser. But eventually, Hurlings hung on for the win. Geiser was second. Jordi Tixier was third. And Hurlings, your overall winner here this weekend. Geiser second, Tixier third. And Hurlings, of course, extends his lead at the top of the championship table in MX2.
The MXGP of France had everything. We had thrills and spills, we had drama and we had romance, as Roman Frebra wooed the French crowd, whipping them into a frenzy with his first MXGP victory on home soil. And as the sun sets on this hillside circuit, we wonder two things. Will Clement de Salle recover from his dislocated shoulder and continue his championship challenge? And will Tony Caroli repeat the feat of Febra at his home round in Majora, Italy in two weeks' time?